We got that same mindset coming into the next one. Same fire, same energy. For everybody, you know, it was a lot of people that picked us to, you know, go to the Western Conference Finals. A lot of people that said we were going to make the finals. After we lost game one, they switched up. So tell them to stay on that side they was on. We don't want them over here no more. What's going on, NBA fanatics? This is your friendly neighborhood Memphis Grizzly homer, Memphis X, and I talk hoops. In today's video, we are going to talk about what are reasonable expectations for the Grizzlies next season. But first, every hero needs their theme music. Piano. Let's start off by talking where the Grizzlies might rank among Western Conference teams and all NBA teams as we think about them some three weeks before training camp starts. I mean, the Grizzlies play the Grizzlies play a preseason game in 19 days which is pretty exciting. But where are the Grizzlies as far as the best teams in the NBA? Well, Mark Stein put out his power rankings, and he had the Grizzlies eighth, which I think is totally fair. The teams ahead of the Grizzlies, the Warriors, yeah. The Bucks, yeah. The Celtics, yeah. And then the Nuggets, okay, let's talk about it. The Clippers, we can talk about it. The Suns and the Sixers. Those are reasonable opinions for a person to have. This is Memphis X with I Talk Hoops. While you're here, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications so you will be alerted to all the new videos I have coming up during this NBA offseason. We have a goal on this channel to get to 1,000 subscribers before the new season starts, and I'm going to need your help to get there. Thank you. Unlike most people around the NBA, I am highly optimistic about the Memphis Grizzlies going into the 2022-23 season. But of course, I'm your resident Grizzly homer, so that might color my vision a little bit. But the fact that people think it is fair or reasonable for the team that was second best in the NBA to not be even top five going into the next season when most of their team is returning and most of their team is young. Even with Jaron Jackson missing about a month of the season, it is not to me reasonable to think a team that is still improving to be worse next season. And the things that I have to think about is that the Grizzlies were not even healthy last year. John Morant missed a lot of games. Dylan Brooks missed a lot of games. That is two of their four top players missing a lot of games. Dylan Brooks missed 50 games last season. The Grizzlies were forced to play a rookie starter for about 25 games last year. And they still had 56 wins. But somehow, some way, other teams are going to be better than the Grizzlies because the West is tougher. To me, this is saying I have no respect for what the Grizzlies did last season, but I am going to just pick them just because. And what I mean by that is we have teams being picked above the Grizzlies that have never won 56 games, i.e. the Denver Nuggets. They've never done it. Not when they were young, not when they were healthy, never. So why is the anticipation that all of a sudden they're going to be good because the Joker has been holding them down all this time? Now, maybe it was something about the way that team was built around Nikola Jokic that made them so much or able to withstand a regular season because they weren't good in the playoffs, but they were able to withstand a regular season. Now, the history of the NBA shows that when, or the recent history of the NBA shows, with these two examples that I'm going to 
present that when a young team jumps up and has a excellent record soon after making the playoffs, it is not the norm for them to take a dive the next year. It doesn't happen. That that is that's not the norm. That is not the expectation. It doesn't matter how hard the conference is. It doesn't have, matter how hard the league is. A team that is young and excellent does not get worse the next year. Just because Jaron Jackson out of is out a month, teams have started to focus on this as, like I said before in a previous video, as their get out of jail free card and being able to demote the Grizzlies with no guilt. And then if he comes back early, they can say, oh, well, we never knew. But even if Jaron was to miss 15 to 20, you know, 15 to 20 games, you would have to think that the Grizzlies are going to be terrible in that span. And people are talking about the Grizzlies defense is going to crater without him. And the Grizzlies played a whole season with an excellent defense the year before when he was out almost the entire season. So let's focus in on the 2010-2011 Oklahoma City Thunder and the 2013-2014 Golden State Warriors. Both of these teams were manned and, you know, led by young players. You had the Kevin Durant, Westbrook, Harden trio in Oklahoma City, and you had the Steph Curry, Clay, uh, Draymond Green trio in Golden State. Both of these teams jumped up after making the playoffs. Their f- first year coming out the lottery, they made the playoffs. And then the next year, they jumped up and had, you know, a better season than before and had a little bit more success than the year before. But that third year was the year of excellence. It was a year, I think, the the Warriors won 64 games and the Thunder were at a 58-win pace in the, short, in the shortened season. So my thoughts is the Grizzlies are not only going to be as good record-wise as last year, but they might have a chance to be better. And I know this is going to be controversial. I know people are going to say, how are they going to do that with Jaron Jackson out? Listen, how did they win 56 games last year when John Morant missed all those games? How did they win 56 games last year when Dylan Brooks missed 50 games? Nobody, if I would have told you at the beginning of that season that we were going to have that injury load that year, you would have never believed that we were going to be the second best team record-wise in the NBA. It's not like the Grizzlies were totally healthy. It's not like the Grizzlies were having some extraordinary amount of shooting luck. It's not like the Grizzlies were. I mean, Jaron Jackson even had a down year offensively. Um, the only, you know, John Morant had a wonderful season. And I don't expect him to slow down any this year. Desmond Bain had a wonderful season. I don't expect him to slow down. Steven Adams fit in perfectly, and I don't expect that to change. I don't expect anybody on the Grizzlies team to be worse this coming season. So explain to me why are these other teams with bigger questions, such as the Clippers, the Warriors, even though I will always give deference to the Warriors because they are a dynasty with proven championship players. So they are not going to even be included in this conversation. But the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Suns, the Mavericks, all four of those teams have bigger questions or as big of questions as the Grizzlies. None of these teams, the Warriors, Paul Paul um, George has played an average of 55 games a season as a Clipper. And he is the healthy one of the duo between him and Kawhi. He is the more healthy person. And when you look at people saying this is the deepest team in the league, their depth is great. But their depth is, a, is Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, 
Maybe John Wall, we don't know. John Wall could be a good guy. He could be starter quality. But the rest of the guys on there in their depth are not starter quality. Also, they don't have any rim protection. Nobody on their team protects the rim. And when we go to the Nuggets, we see they have also a fatal flaw. And that is, who is going to back up the Joker? We have seen in the past with the Denver Nuggets that when Nikola Jokic goes out of the game, that team craters because the team is not going to be good defensively. So what is going to happen to their offense when the Joker leaves the floor? And of course, we know the Mavericks have, you know, have to replace their second best player on the team. And people act like that's not going to even slow them down. So my thing is, I believe the Grizzlies are going to be better than most people expect. And no, I don't think it's reasonable or a fair assessment for the Grizzlies to be seen as the eighth best team in the league when they were the second best team in the league a season ago. So that means you ha- you're not you're going beyond saying that the Clippers and the Nuggets are going to be healthy. You are saying that teams that they were better than last year are all of a sudden going to be better than them this year, record-wise. I mean, why would you have – why would the Milwaukee Bucks have a better record than the Grizzlies during the regular season this season – if they didn't last season. Giannis was just as good. Middleton was there. Drew Holiday was there. What did they add that was so significant this year that's going to propel them to be a better team than the Grizzlies? And that goes for a a few other teams, even the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, people are very gaga about the 76ers, but still, they have questions. Is Joel Embiid going to make it through another season healthy? Is James Harden going to make it through another season without quitting? Is their depth real? Is P.J. Tucker still, does he still have anything left in the tank? Like I say, when we get to saying that there are questions around in the Grizzlies, like everybody seems to think there are questions surrounding the Grizzlies, there are questions surrounding every team except the champions where we won't question them. But let me know what you think about this. Do you think it's reasonable for people to think the Grizzlies are going to fall off this season? And if it is reasonable, what does that mean regarding how you feel about the Grizzlies and last year? Do you think it was a fluke? Because you would have to think it was a fluke if you think this year they're going to fall off. Hmm, That's just me. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me hear from you. And we'll do another video next tomorrow when we'll be talking about the Black Panther. Peace.